Air Brutal. Uh, so I wanted to make a quick video today because I was just reading the news and I saw that the Russian Defense Ministry has begun disclosing their um, public acquisition program for the MiG-41 project, which is, to quote them, hold on, I got my notes here, sorry, I was not planning on making a video today, but it's very interesting and it affects my work, so, uh, let's see, single stage to orbit, um, hypersonic, at least Mach 4, thrust vectoring, low observable stealth, with a solid state laser based weapon system. So no missiles. It doesn't mention a gun. Uh but I mean that's all good and well enough. But so here's here's why this is interesting, okay? Anyone that's involved with development, and I'm not gonna dox myself, but anyone that's involved with development in North America and Eurozone or even Commonwealth countries knows about three very important legislations. The TPA at 51, the TH, the THA of 59, which amends the 51, and the the Northrop Lockheed Boeing uh, and overall embargo of 77 and 79. Okay, so what those do, and I'm not going to break it down like a lawyer, but what that shit says is ARPA or DARPA or the State Department or the Ministry of, or, or excuse me, the Department of Defense. I'm thinking in Russian now. Petrovia uh, can take your work, your intellectual property, and then in in various ways they can compensate. They'll compensate you, but you have no control of what they do. So if you're an American citizen, or if you're located here. It's domestically located, meaning they can take possession of it. Remember, nine tenths of the laws, possessions, nine tenths. Um, then it becomes theirs, and the the uh, the basis for them to do this is completely nebulous and arbitrary. Like it's it's up to them. They can just decide one day that they want it, and it's gone. You know, so they're not that draconian unless you are seriously talking about breaking like the petrodollar or the common model they'll they'll shut your ass down you'll live well you'll always have a job but they'll shut your shit down so this is really important because of the brinkmanship is very dangerous right the cold war you saw each side posturing 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 nuclear proliferation start you know you have ICBMs Everything just building, building. And what that is, is, you know, in the black world, we have espionage. That's just part of it. You know, uh, a, a lot of people aren't aware of operational security and taking a polygraph, like, every fucking third day. You know, and it doesn't matter who you are or where you work. It will happen to you if you're working on uh, sensitive materials. So, um, that's just the way that the system is set up is to protect you. You know, like, uh, I'll quote, I won't even tell you what I'm quoting, but, you know, it's, it's like, you got a family, right? You have a family, okay? Or friends, let's use friends, because some people don't have a family. So, maybe you don't have a friend either. You got a pet, alright? So, your dog it will never betray you, right? But, he might wander off one day if you're not there to feed him. You know, if you don't come home, and you don't take care of him, you don't pick up his shit, you don't fill his water bowl, you don't fill his, his tray, you don't bring him a cow ear, he's going to get out and he's going to go find food, you know, like that's just the nature of people, they want to survive, you know, the nature of anything that's alive wants to survive, so if you, if you don't pay attention to something that you love or you leave it alone too long, it might start to question you, that's families and friends, that's human nature, that's just the way it goes, you know, so if person A knows something and they tell person B, don't ever tell anyone, you know, that's fine, but what happens if person B gets pissed off at person A one day, and they can tell someone what person A told them, so something to think about when you're when you're trying to have a concept of, of, 
operational security. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's classified, you know, and, like, they they harken back to, like, the men in black or, like, some movie, you know, and that's, like, most people nowadays. It's, like, their reference point is a movie or some fiction thing or some crap, you know, so, like, they don't really have a good basis of reality. A very small percentage of the population actually does research of their own inclination. So, um, with that being said... You know, there's there's a little saying, you know, your wife might cheat on you, your kids will lie to you, but the black world will never lie to you. The black world will never cheat on you. They'll always be there for you. They'll always take care of you as long as you follow the one rule. The one rule is don't give away the secrets. So why the MiG-41 is very important to aviation, avionics, weapon systems, technolo technology as a whole. I think I don't go out on a limb very far when I could say that the F-22 or the F-35 or the F-16 or the F-18 or even the Su-27, 37, 35, whatever you want to say, they represent our technological zenith, if you will. It's everything combined. I mean, men can't fly. You know, that was already thought of as an impossibility, so that's one, checked out off the box. Now, you know, we're going faster than the speed of sound, there's another one, you know, so my point is that every peak of every system of research, weapons, physics, materials, logistics, electronics, internodality, oh, we shouldn't have said that, all come together in fighter jets. Because they are the top of the of the food chain when it comes to area defense, and they are the kind of bona fides of a developed nation. Like they, the the Olympic Committee, for instance, won't even let you have the Olympics unless you have fighter aircraft in your air force. A lot of people don't know that. So, because of the legal problems in our country, Russia doesn't have those. Europe doesn't have those. You're going to see a lot of guys like uh, Riccioni and people hate fucking Spire, but, I mean, he worked for 45 years, and he knows a hell of a lot more than you. He knows more than I do. He worked with the legends, you know. All these guys, they went over there, you know, they did their thing. They After the embargo, they said, fine, bye, and they went and worked because they want to progress their art, you know. Like, this is art to a lot of people, designing a beautiful wing or designing something that is, is going to create more efficiency or give your guy another a half second quicker turn while also not bleeding off the energy. I mean, you're going to save a life, you know, and also jets are fucking awesome. I mean, it's, it's adrenaline in a machine, you know, it's, it's amazing. So the MiG-41 represents kind of a red letter day, especially the way that they're going about it, you know, so they're, they're, they're opening the door for us to lift up a curtain, if you will. I'm kind of a poet. So if they open this door and they start in the year 2017 and say, we're developing our sixth generational aircraft. It's going to be a single stage to orbit vehicle. It's going to use a new drivetrain in orbit because I mean, there's no, you can't use jet propulsion in orbit. So you got to start thinking, what are they going to do? It's going to use a solid state laser for its its missile systems, you know, and, and like in the black world, well, in the world of, of development, you hear this and you say like, what, that's 20 years old, you know, like we, that's already, anyways, you know, so what this signals is a turning of the times. We're, we're getting, we're getting the green lights kind of let, let it out. So over the next five years, 10 years, you're going to see a lot of, of this uh, technology especially from defense, getting diffused down into commercial um, usages and non-government usages, non-controlled usages, and that is how it's done, you know? So for me, I'm really happy to see that the MiG-41 is being made in public. Uh, the F-22 and the F-35, you know, those are, those are very much informational warfare weapons. It's good to know as you know, the Western Hemisphere, you know, we have a low observable stealth air dominance fighter that's disclosed. But if you think that's all we've got, you're not using your brain 100% of the time. You know, you just have to remember that everything you see 
is what is decided upon to show there's there's too much to hide so in in essence you misdirect 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 you know so that's just kind of how it is um another thing you will start seeing in the coming weeks is uh in the news media on both sides you know first of all you're going to see a shit ton of publication on the MiG-41 you're going to see breakdowns of solid state or excuse me single stage to orbit you're going to see people talking about the saber engine and the uh um cyclic phase resonance engines you might hear a few um academic development names i'm not going to start naming names here because like i still work i'm not trying to dox myself so uh but also you know i've i've never once compromised myself because i know i know how to go about this shit so it's just really interesting everyone that's enthusiastic about aviation and uh next generation technologies you know right now like we're coming into a huge bread and butter time it's going to be like a buffet you know there's going to be so much new material in the public sector it's already starting to be released to be honest with you. the department of defense is putting out information about low observable techniques they're putting information about uh active electronic techniques um i'm not going to diffuse my topic here and start going into specifics you know because like i said i like what i do so um, in any event, that's all I wanted to get out there today. You know, just be ready. You know, you're, we're going to see a lot of really exciting changes coming up in the near future. You're gonna, you, we're going to be seeing a lot of um, groundbreaking technology that's going to be new to a lot of people. Uh, that it, it's it's you know, I mean, and then here's the other thing: the the due date on this def on this contract is from Sukhoi and, and uh, Mikoyan Gerovich Mig. Um, their their operational test launch date is 2020. That's in three years. That's not even three years. It's two years and some change. You know, so, I mean, just use your brain. It takes a lot longer than that to test an airframe. You got to do wind. You got to, you got to, uh, I'm not even going to break it down. There's so much shit that goes into getting a, an airframe operational. And even for the Russians, you know, they might do it a little bit fast and dirty. There's no fucking way you can develop a next generational low observable single stage to orbit fighter in th in three, you know, with an operational test bed launch date of 2020. There's no way unless you already have the test bed airframe made and it's already being flown doing Chinooking and all well fuck. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to have a bad meeting on on Friday. Uh you can't, you, you just can't. It's not possible. I mean, it takes a year to build an airframe right, you know, and, and to, to, to sound it out and test it correctly, make sure that the fucking thing's not going to reverberate itself to pieces. It, it takes minimum a decade to get everything and everybody and everything pulled together and get all the strings, clip all the frayed ends, burn off the fat. So my point is, if the MiG-41 is operationally test bed launch date 2020, they already have two, at least. They already have two. They're already testing their launch profiles, and they're already testing their landing profiles. Um, I've done some theoretical work on what it would take to create a single stage to orbit fighter fleet for interdiction, and the type of launch and landing profiles that would be most efficient to those types of craft if they were to exist. So um, it's not something that you can test without making a bunch of noise, and it's not something that you can test in the dark. So this is why they're kind of dropping it out there. Uh, because, again, you can't do as much misdirection now because of the, the state of the world. You know, you, you can't have crazy... Uh, weapons tests and all of this posturing like war games which in the past historically have been used to cover up black testing um, it's just impossible so this kind of represents a new turning of the leaf it's nothing that's never happened before but for this age and this at this state of uh, academia and uh, disclosure 
it's a, it's it's an exciting time. So, um, you know, like people kind of cream their pants over thrust vectoring and optic confusion and uh, solid state lasers, but that shit is 1970s. You know, like there there's so much at play right now that it's it's almost mind boggling the amount of just insanity that is being worked on. And that's literally what it is. It's insane. It's the wildest ideas you can possibly imagine. Let's proof a concept, that shit, and figure it out so that we got it 100%. So that's just how it goes. Um, wings and fuel and, uh, you know, like that is so just tacitern, public level, talk about this, guys leave us alone so that we can actually do the real work back here, you know, so what I'm interested in seeing on the MIG is how they handle the uh, airflow problem, how they handle the uh, staging problem with upper atmospheric flight, whether they're just going on kinetic, what materials they'll be using, especially in the aft parts of the, uh, the four, excuse me, the four parts of the airframe. This is root exit and re-entry and uh, the the powertrain on their solid state lasers so that's what I'm most interested to see because that's my kind of that's my bread and butter